Let's discuss the best values or returns on investment in website accessibility. And when I say that, what I mean is where are you getting the most for, for your time, money, and energy? Let's start with automated scans. Now, the only problem with automated scans is they're oversold and people think that they do more than they do. People will call them ADA compliance checkers. They will think if they have zero errors that return on a scan that their website is completely accessible. That's not the case, but scans do a lot of things well. And let's start off with the fact that they're completely free. So you can uh, run a scan on a single page completely free, no strings attached. You will instantly get a feel of your website's overall accessibility. You will instantly be able to identify accessibility issues that reside on your website. And some of these issues are issues that lead to litigation. So by reducing your issues that return on a scan, you can also lower your risk of a lawsuit. So scans are extremely helpful, they are extremely valuable, and they are free. And if you start with the Wave Scan, which is intuitive and very beginner friendly, you can, Wave will even help guide you through the different accessibility issues. And so it's extremely helpful. Number two is a consultant. I like to think of a consultant as insurance with benefits. So a, consul a con consultant can, first of all, help you avoid any pitfalls. So save you money, prevent you from spending time on something that you should never even be looking at. There are a lot of distractors in the website accessibility space. And with a good consultant, you can avoid those. But what a consultant can also do is organize and direct your efforts. So as someone who is getting into this space, likely because, of, because you have been sued or you want to prevent a lawsuit, a, a consultant can help organize and direct your efforts so that you are focusing your energy and your time and your money on that which actually makes your website accessible. Now there's a, another angle to this and it's a strategic one and that is preventing litigation. And so many people are concerned with preventing litigation and there's no reason we can't do both at the same time. There's no reason that we can't approach accessibility so that we are resolving the issues that are most likely to lead to litigation first and then working our way into a fully WCAG conformant and accessible website. So a, cons a consultant can help you with many of those things. Um, as we get to in my next point, education and training can help you with, uh, with litigation. But the point is, is that a consultant returns a tremendous value. For less than $500, you can immediately understand exactly what you need to know when it comes to ADA compliance and website accessibility. Number three is education and training. So when I was talking about the litigation angle, many accessibility consultants are not aligned with preventing lawsuits. Um, I am, and that is why I developed the ADA compliance course. It is to make sure that you are following best practices for ADA compliance, and it is to make sure that you are strategically uh, approaching accessibility in a way so as to reduce your risk of litigation as you are making your website more accessible. And so this training um, not only is going to help with ending litigation, but it's also going to help with accessibility and it's going to train your team on how to find and fix these most commonly claimed issues in litigation. And then the other training I have is the WCAG course and this course is going to fully explain all of the different requirements that are found in the web content accessibility guidelines. And I have even updated it to include the newest version, which is still yet to be released as of, uh, as of this video, but the newest version, WCAG 2.2. But the point is, is that education and training can make your digital team proficient in accessibility so that you are not constantly introducing accessibility issues and that your team can make accessibility a seamless part of your processes so that you are integrating accessibility as you go and you no longer have to source out to third parties and look to other people to help you with accessibility. You can end that disjointed process and make accessibility a part of any content you create or any code that is added to your website. So 
when you have the, the content, it is going to be accessible as you are creating it because you are making it accessible as you go. The same thing applies with code. So education and training is not an immediate return because of course, you know, you have to uh, go over this and it takes some time to learn. But even if your team is just spending a week and going through materials, um, it doesn't have to be my courses. Of course, I recommend my courses, but any education and training investment is going to go a long, long way. Also, your accessibility statement. This is where you can start making sales because this is where you start making accessibility a part of your marketing. It should be a part of your marketing. Customers are looking for it. Procurement agents are looking for it. Everyone is looking to see who is accessible because those are the products that people want to buy. And those are where the, it's, it's, the digital experience is so much better because accessibility leads to usability. So when you have an accessible website, it's not going to just make sure, ensure that people with disabilities have access. It's going to ensure that you are having an optimal user experience. So it's very, very important, but um, it leads to sales. So your accessibility statement is a really good place to talk about your commitment to accessibility. It's a really good place to showcase all of the investments you have made. So these investments could be the training and education that you have. It could be hiring a consultant. It could be uh, having an audit conducted. All of these things are things that you can showcase to show that your commitment to ac accessibility is a genuine one and you are truly taking action and making sure that your digital experiences are accessible. So there could be a tremendous return, immediate return on an accessibility statement because you can use this to showcase all you have done. Similarly, you can leverage your uh, VPAT, which is actually technically an ACR. So it, it, your ACR, your Accessibility Conformance Report. This is a document that um, that outlines the accessibility of your product or service. So let's say you have, let's say that you offer a digital product and you have a, um, an accessibility conformance report for that. That document is not a marketing document in and of itself. However, it can be used and leveraged for marketing purposes because people are looking for VPATs or ACRs. And the reason I say both is because VPAT is the template People commonly refer to this template as what they're looking for as an, uh, an accounting of the accessibility of your product or service. The, technical, the technically correct name is an accessibility conformance report. But either way, this VPAT slash ACR is a document which you can leverage to showcase that you care about accessibility and you can, you can, um, anybody can look up the accessibility of your product or service. Now, whether or not you make that public, um, that's an internal decision, but for the most part, I recommend that you do because when you do, there is a tremendous ROI to be had. So I think these are the best five values in digital accessibility. Um, really, we're focused on website accessibility, but we, when we get into the VPAT, ACR, we're also talking about other digital products and services.